ecosystems they lived in. For example, across the world, desert dwellers are statistically more likely than chance to invent monotheistic religions. Rainforest dwellers invent polytheistic ones and all sorts of baggage that goes along with that. Another pattern, when you look at humans living in small hunter-gatherer bands, the religions they invent involve almost all the time involve gods who could care less what humans are doing. It's not until humans are living in sufficiently high density that you're interacting with strangers, that you interact anonymously, then humans start inventing what are called moralizing gods. Gods who are watching us and gods who are judging us and gods who are the pair of eyes up there on the bus stop there when we're getting complex enough that we can't do it ourselves. Or another critical st distinction has to do with traditional ways of making a livelihood. In the traditional world, people are either top left, hunter-gatherers, top right, agriculturalists or horticulturalists, or in the center, pastoralists. Pastoralists, people wandering the grasslands or the deserts with their herds of camels and cows and goats and all of that. And there's a particular vulnerability if you're a pastoralist. If you're a rainforest hunter-gatherer, bad people cannot come at night and steal your rainforest. If you're an agriculturist, they can't come at night and steal 20 acres of your maize. But if you're a pastoralist, people could come at night and steal your herds rustle your herds there, and everywhere around the world, pastoralists come up with cultures of honor, built around violent retribution, warrior classes, honor killings, vendettas that stretch for centuries. And what is most remarkable is, within minutes of birth, if you were a child in a culture of honor, your mother is speaking to you at a higher volume and holding you for a shorter length of time than if you were a child in one of these other cultures. If you were born into a collectivist culture, on the average, your mother is nursing you for longer lengths of time in your first week of life than if you were born in an individualist culture. In other words, within minutes of birth, Everything we've already seen is now being shaped by what your ancestors were doing for a living centuries before. In other words, ecosystems shape cultures, shape brains, shape behaviors. And some of these differences are manifest within minutes of birth. In other words, brains and bodies and behaviors and cultures and genes all co-evolve. Finally, if we're gotten this far back and we're talking about things like genes, by definition, we're talking about evolution. What does the evolution of behavior have to do with any of this? And modern thinking about the evolution of behavior has long ago trashed the notion that we behave for the good of the species or behave in order to survive. We behave in order to pass on copies of genes. Contemporary thinking about the evolution of behavior is built around three building blocks. First one, individual selection. What organisms do is try to leave as many copies of their genes in the next generation as possible, maximizing reproductive success, the selfish gene concept. And this explains a ton of human behavior. For example, remarkably, 16% of Earth's humans are direct descendants of Genghis Khan the most reproductively successful human of all time, all sorts of powerful humans act to maximize their reproductive success. Next building block, yes, some of the time you pass on as many copies of genes as you can, but some of the time an even better way of doing it is helping your relatives pass on copies of genes, kin selection. And humans have invented a version of kin selection that makes other primates shrivel up with envy. We can bequeath our material wealth to our relatives. There's inheritance. We have a way of magnifying differences through generations that way. We do kin selection like nobody else out there. Final building block, individual selection or helping relatives, or sometimes there's selection for cooperating with utter strangers, being cooperative and altruistic with them, as long as they do it back. Reciprocal relationships of cooperation. And we obviously do that on a level like no other species out there. Forget scratching your back and you scratch mine. We've invented barter and economic system, all of that. In other words, the building blocks of modern evolutionary thinking explain a ton about human behavior. Until